Welcome to the Conversation Cold Ones podcast. I'm your host, Damian, and my co-host, Jared. Hello. Here, why don't you take us into uh, Brewskies of the Week? Oh, my lights reset. I love that. Well, this week, I am drinking a Smirnoff Ice Red, White, and Berry Limited Edition, as you guys can see. Uh, this week, I'm drinking uh, Smirnoff Ice. Normal deal. Damn, brother, original ass. Ah. You know, hey, I... I got to keep mixing it up, you know, or I'll get sick of it. Pretty much. Uh, all righty. Let's get into some things. Uh, first off, if you are on PC, the long awaited steam summer sale has hit. There's a bunch of games on sale. Uh, the sea of thieves or sorry, sea of thieves is on sale. I think it's like $26. Um, you have another big one was like horizon zero dawn is like, 45% off or something like that. So you're looking yeah. to play that. Uh, you can grab that one fairly cheap. Uh, all the battlefields are on sale. Red Dead's like $13. Damn. Like, I'd probably grab Red Dead if I were you. Um, and there's a bunch of other stuff. Avengers is like $12, some crazy like that. So if you're, you've you been waiting on a lot of games, go get them. Um, a game I recommend getting. I don't know if it's on sale. I didn't see it. But Death Stranding, obviously. Uh that's worth paying thirty dollars for. Actually, it'll probably be like twenty twenty five. Um, are you gonna pick up any games, Jared, or any games that you hope to see on the sale? Uh, yeah. One of the excuse me. One of the games I'm looking at is Valheim, okay, and yeah. there was something on my wish list. I don't remember the name of that I'm looking at. I have to look at look better. Yeah, I think the Resident Evils are on sale. Even I think Village is like five percent off. Um. Yeah. Oh, Days Gone. If it gets, oh, if it goes, Days on Gone's sale. on sale. Yes. Uh, play Days Gone if you have it. It's really good. Um. Yeah. Also, real quick. Uh, just because these came out about a week ago, but they sold out immediately. But I finally just got mine. Um, I got the uh the black PS5 controller. Um, I think which looks a lot better than just the uh. The normal one. Yeah, the white. Yeah, I think the black. I think the console should have been black. But that's just me. Um, also, uh, I, I have gotten two PS5 so far. Um, sold one to a friend. Um, if anyone needs a PS5, hit me up. I'll probably be able to get you one. For like retail. Um, not going to charge you any extra. I'll make you, you know, pay, you, pay me shipping or something like that. Uh, but one thing that is going out of stock fast, um, but they're actually like selling a lot more of um, the uh, NVIDIA 3060s, 3070s, 3080s, and 3090s. Um, they're finally, or sorry, the 30 series, whatever you want to call them. Uh, yeah. They're finally like coming more into stock. They just did, uh, I think it was Best Buy or Newegg. They did a, which it's so sad it's coming to this. They've done a round of bot detection. So what they did was they put a bunch up for sale, but they're not really up for sale. And then they would detect bots and then those people get banned. So they're getting rid of the bots, but still it's such those people who, you know, thought they got one and then they didn't. Um, but those are actually coming back. So, you know, you don't have to pay the ridiculous price. I think 3080s are selling for like $1,500 on eBay. Um, when their retail is like 700 or something. That's fucking insane. Yeah, so it's actually pretty crazy. Um, actually, me and Jared have discussed about getting the new 3080s uh, for Battlefield and Forza and everything like that. Uh, also, the, um, the Sea of Thieves DLC came out. So, like, it's getting, like, a lot of praise. The Pirates of the Caribbean one, I'm hearing a lot of good things about it. Um, yep. We'll see how that is. Uh, one thing I want to talk about, uh, Fast 9 releases this week. Really? Yes. And from everything I'm seeing, it is ridiculous and stupid. It's even, a lot of people are saying it lost. You know, you know, you know how Fast Fears has always been ridiculous? Like, mm -hmm. you know, like Dom catching cars or like, you know, crashing to a part of the highway so you can shoot yourself across and save someone. Like, that's ridiculous. Like, they're going to space with a rocket attached to the back of a car. And it's like, you know, they're finally right. pushing it too far. Yeah. 
But my question is, are you going to go see that? Is that a movie you're no. going to want to go see? Do you nope. watch the Fast and Furious movies? Nope. Really? I've only seen a couple, and I have no interest in seeing all of them all the way through. You should at least watch Tokyo Drift. I've seen that one. That's the second one, right? That's the third one. Oh, well, I've seen the, the second one. I think the uh, first one, first and second, I think. Okay. Yeah. Do you see any of the ones with Dwayne? The Cock Johnson? Um, Did you see well, the one where uh, Paul Walker left? No. I think I saw uh, the first half of Hobbs and Shaw or whatever the fuck. That's Sorry. I know that's not uh, not officially. Asked, but yeah. No, I just okay. don't. I don't care for him. I think that uh, anyone who's seen him has have seen him for me. That's how I view it. I don't need to see it. People okay. talk about it. That's... And uh, finally, we have uh, Halloween Kills, the sequel to Halloween 2018. I think is when it came out. Um. Yeah, sounds right. Yeah, I think it was 2018. Did you see the first one? First one, what? The first Halloween. Well, this Halloween in 2018 when they released that. Did you see, Did you yeah. see that one? What did you think yeah. of it? Uh, I went with. I went on a double date when we went and saw it with Jordan. Okay. Did you like it? Um. No, it was actually pretty good. Uh, it was something I wasn't sure if I was gonna like. I ended up actually enjoying it. Uh, it was pretty interesting. Well, I mean, yeah, it was. Yeah, I mean, for no, if I've never seen any of them before. I liked it. Yeah. What? Yeah. You never seen the first one? No. Like the original first one, you've never seen? No. That's a classic. Yeah, I know. I've seen uh, the Nightmare on Elm Street, those things, but I've never seen like Halloween's better than Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, I know. But I've never seen the other ones, the old ones. I like the new, the new one a lot. It's cool. Yeah, but like the first one's still like the best. Yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to be like one of those people. That say, oh, the first is always but like the first one's actually like the best. Yeah, no, I haven't seen it. Uh, I've seen clips from it and stuff like on YouTube and shit, because if I ever see, look up anything remotely related to like a scary movie, I get like recommendations from like watch mojo and shit. And so I've seen clips just out of boredom late at night watching stuff. But I've never seen the full thing all the way through. Well, I think this this October last year we didn't do this i think we mentioned it in a podcast but we never actually like, did it i think every week we'll watch like a horror movie and review it um in the month of october or like yeah no we did talk about that and i know i didn't because we were like starting to do the renovations in the basement around that time right so uh we'll definitely have to out of one of the four movies halloween the first one has to be like probably the last one we'll watch on halloween or whatever um so that you can probably yeah. see that um, I don't even know what the other three would be. Yeah, because I, I don't want I don't want to watch like Halloween movies, like because I don't I don't care for like Hocus Pocus or Halloween Town, like they're all right, but like when I think of Halloween, I think of, like scary movies. Yeah. Um, so we'll have to get like a a mix of genres. So like Halloween's our slasher, so then we need like a ghost movie, and now we need this. Um, but yeah, that's for a later date. Uh. But what did you think of the new Halloween Kills trailer that releases later this year? It looks all right, but I kind of just didn't think they needed to make another one. Like I think they're making the one way more the after this. yeah, but like the way this one, the one before this ended, it felt like a good ending. Like I didn't think that there was any need for this. Um, that being said, it looks good. Like I'll probably see it. Uh, but I just it's uh, it felt unnecessary to me, but. I don't know. I, I haven't seen the original, so maybe there's more to it than that. I, yeah. I, it looks good. So, I like the basically the sequel, uh, Halloween from 2018, because it took a lot of what John Carpenter did well in the original one and just gave me more of the same. So, it, it was I feel like a lot of those old Halloween movies like um, the Rob Zombie Halloween movies, they went for more of a brutal over sexualized movies and um after halloween 2 i mean halloween 3 doesn't have michael myers in it it's uh not even like it, it's not even the same type of movie um mm. and then as they went on they got cheesier and cheesier i feel like we haven't had like a at the time we didn't have a really good halloween since like halloween h2o um and then 2018 hits we get that one 
And when I was watching, it's like, oh, this is literally John Carpenter's Halloween, just modernized. Um, so I feel like they did really well with that. The issue is I don't want like a, a Halloween 2 modernized. I want this to be like its own thing. And yeah. from what I'm seeing, uh, it looks like they're taking a lot of aspects of Halloween 2. Um, the fact that like they're going back to the, uh, you know, Michael's um, home, which they mentioned in the trailer. Um, I, I do think it's cool that like people are, it, it seems what they're setting up is people are going out and like hunting Mike or Michael. So he's being hunted as well, which is cool. We'll see how that turns out. Um, I'll always enjoy them. They're just fun to watch. Um, I don't think they're anything like special. It's been a long time since there's been like a, like a, a phenomenal horror movie. It's been a really long time. Yeah. I, I feel like the last one was The Conjuring, where like everyone was like, okay, this is like a really good movie. Um, See that's that's interesting to hear from you because I think horror movies are stupid, and so I don't think there's ever been a good horror movie. I think horror movies are harder to make and for them to work because I feel like nowadays, like back in the day with like The Exorcist and stuff like this, of course those movies were more scarier at the time because people weren't so like people weren't used to that they didn't have the internet. We see way more fucked up shit on the internet than we do in movies, and oh yeah, um. So back oh, in the wait, except for Scream. I think those were really good. Thank you. Yeah. I, love Scream. I forgot you like them. I love Scream. Um, I actually hate Scream now. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> I, I know why people like a lot of people go, oh, well, these movies aren't as scary as, you know, Poltergeist and uh, The Exorcist. And it's like, well, those movies aren't scary. They were just scary at the time. So it, I think it's really hard for movies to be horrifying because everyone's so um, desensitized. And everyone's so like you, you see worse things on the internet like i said so why would a horror movie scare you i, I just think exactly. what why i like horror movies so much is just they don't take themselves so seriously usually they're pr like a lot of times they're pretty funny and you know i just like like having tense moments um like when i watch the conjuring for the first time and she goes into the basement right like that's a pretty tense scene um I don't know. I feel like thrillers have done this better than horror movies. Like when I watch a good thriller, like I feel like I, I it's way more intense for me and I get more of a reaction out of myself than horror movies. Um, but I feel like that's because thrillers, like they're more realistic. I feel like it's what a lot of horror movies missed out. Um, has there ever been a, like, agree with a movie that scared you like at all? Like even when you're a little kid, like you're like, Oh shit. Like that got me. Um, I mean, the first Paranormal Activity movie, okay. uh, like, was the first one I remember watching where I was like, oh, okay, this, you know, great, like, my dad's sitting here having me watch a scary movie, and there were a couple of things where I was like, fuck, like, it was a jump, good jump scare. Um, other than that, the only one that I've ever seen that made me, it wasn't like, it didn't scare me, but it made me go, ugh, like, I didn't like that, was the one with... I think it's called The Cabin with Liam Hemsworth. Oh, Cabin in the Woods. Cabin in the Woods. That one, like, I know it wasn't necessarily meant to be scary. It was more like a, not an M. Night Shyamalan twist, but it was like, it had that twist at the end with everything happening, like the underground. Well, so it, it was it, definitely like a, like an overview of horror movies and like all the tropes. And stuff. That's what yeah, that's, so I, like that, that I remember seeing it and thinking I didn't like it. But not like it didn't like it because it was bad, but I didn't like it because it helped made me feel. Um, and I, that's like the only one that really comes to mind. Like other than that, everything I've seen it was I was a little bit too young to understand like Scream and uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, and they didn't seem as scary, but I think it's just right. because I don't even know. I, just, I, I didn't seem scary. It just seemed like oh, like, that was meant to be a jump scare. Like I knew that, but I was I was a little bit younger. Right. It, but it was like around the age of understanding those things was paranormal activity and then the uh, uh cabin in the woods that those kind of things yeah when i was younger the one the movies never really scared me it was just one scene um i wasn't scared i just didn't like watching it uh it's actually in the first nightmare on elm street where i forget her name she goes out into the alley and freddy krueger's there and his like arms extend really long um yeah, that's weird yeah, I that scene that. always made me uncomfortable and I, I still think like to this day like 
Scream, the first one, has the best intro to a horror movie ever. Um, you know, Drew Barrymore sitting there talking about movies. Her boyfriend gets gutted. Like, she sees the killer in the house, like, the chase down. Like, when I was younger, even though I, I watched that movie over and over and over again, like, I still would, like, tense up, and it was still very intense. And even to this day, I watch it, and it's like, this is, this is very good. This is very intense. Um, that's why I was... That's what I, I kind of appreciate about my mom, not to give her like that much credit. Uh, she, uh, she always like, I always got to see kind of everything, right? So like mm -hmm. cartoons, I really didn't watch that many like newer age cartoons. Um, I watched Looney Tunes, Tom and Jerry, um, the Jetsons, Flintstones, the original Scooby-Doo, and then like what's new Scooby-Doo, which was the nineties one. And then when I got older, I kind of watched the new ones like SpongeBob and stuff. But when it came to movies, like, I never really got to see a lot of the new movies when they came out. Like, it was kind of like a wait for it to hit family video, and then I would watch it. So I'd watch a lot of the same movies over and over again in my house. So, I mean, like, Ghost Ship, that's a great one I used to watch when I was younger all the time. Um, Isn't that one the one that's like a play on Titanic, but if it was haunted? I mean, so uh, everyone knows the beginning scene where... Uh, where they get kids decapitated? Yeah, because of the wires. Okay, yeah, that's uh, okay. yeah. Love that movie to death. Um, I'll never forget great. when he's like eating beans or something like that, and the can turns into worms. Like that scene's so great. Or where the girl's in the the elevator shaft and she gets the guy yeah. to, like, down and he falls. Um, but I I watched Scream all three of them at the time so much. Like I can sit as I'm watching, I can just blurt out the lines like pretty easily. Um, the Mummy movies. Like I, I love those ones. I watch them all the time with Brendan Fraser. Oh um, yes. Yeah. So a, a lot of like even movies. Like when I was young, my mom would like let me watch Goodfellas and a lot of these other mom Casino, and so I, I got to experience a lot of that stuff um, when I was younger. So I feel like for a lot of people our age, they don't have like the movie reference. That I feel like I've gained because of my mom. Um, and a lot of people don't watch like a lot of the old movies anymore they just wait for the new stuff and it's like there's so there's a lot of movies that people forget about that are like still like some of the best movies of all time well um, you know i agree like as i've gotten older and i've gotten more into movies these past couple like years like this past half a decade i have come to discover that i would rather re-watch older movies opposed to uh, watching like a lot of these newer ones like there's yeah i can go and like, I don't know. I, and it also feels like movies haven't been coming out very good the past couple of years anyway. Like when I first yeah. uh, started dating Rachel and we would go and like, I take her to see a movie like every other weekend because there was just good stuff to see in theaters. And I feel like the past like three years, maybe it's been like, yeah, like we can go see a movie, but you know, we're going to like, you know, scrape in the bottom of the barrel on this one. And then of course, like you'll have like, the, I mean, the Marvel movies, like those were always, we got to go see. Uh, and then there was the occasional, like, that would be a great movie to see, and it ends up being a great movie. But normally it's like, what the fuck? Like, nothing good comes out. And a lot of yeah. a lot of things right now is you, you're, we're stuck in this, like, nostalgia age where things are being remastered or re redone. And it's like, you can't take something that was amazing and then, like, redo it in a, like, a fresh, like, modern take, yeah. but so change all the, the good parts. Stuff, like. Yeah, but like the, the Halloween movies aren't like that's not even a good example because those are good th those are decent enough movies. I mean, like the like Star Footloose. Wars. Well, Footloose, yeah, but like my thing is Star Wars. Like they fucking butchered, yeah, butchered the sequels. Like the prequels. I know at the time everyone hated them, oh, and it was really like, good. oh, they're so bad. But it's like the prequels were good. Like the prequels actually like did something well for yeah. Star Wars. Yeah. But the sequels were like it was unnecessary. Like Star Wars ended when he made the first three and then they gave us the the pre like what happened before which is awesome people want to know what happened before and like the clone wars great with more more stuff like even now the shows that are out like mandalorian it's like post empire thing which is cool because the post empire thing is fun but the events of the sequel is where it gets less fun right i mean even like the the lore and uh all the stuff that with the Star Wars legends like they had all kinds of stuff that happened after the empire fell which was awesome but they didn't take any of the good stuff yeah, they just they scrapped it for this random bullshit. That is where the because pro they were they were uh they were doing meeting people's agendas. They were trying to be socially like oh oh like women and like 
you know, stuff like that, like that crap. No, not to say women aren't good, but I'm yeah. saying they, they were, they were focusing more on narratives than they were the actual story and what right. it meant. Yeah. That is an example of what they've been doing wrong. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's sad because if they just made, if people were able to be original and make original content, movies would be great. And they would have not never stopped being great because instead of being one in 10 movies that come out, fuck, maybe less one in 50 movies come out. That's like a fucking masterpiece. You've got like, you've got, even less than that and it could be it could be fucking hundreds it could be like a hundred movies out of 200 that could be half yeah like you, you could have those but people yeah. aren't original and it's not happening i feel like so i feel like in what i would call the movie golden age which is like the 70s to 90s you're getting you're getting all of these classics i mean you had martin scorsese at his prime you know goodfellas raging bolt um you had movies like taxi driver scarface um you know, and there's a lot of other ones. I mean, even like just they're not masterpieces, but just good quality movies. Grease, Footloose, um, Boogie mm -hmm. Nights, like a lot of these movies that were coming out. And I I think the 2000s were kind of like the end of that. Um, you like that have, was starting to look down. Yeah, because I mean, you good had, stuff coming out, but it was on a downslope. Yeah, you had a lot of movies that yeah. came out that were good, but you it definitely like slowed down a lot because like I feel like the 80s and 90s gave us a ton of like ma it was masterpiece after masterpiece really um and then i feel like uh it just went into like okay well these work we're gonna remake them whatever but it became more of a let's make these same kind of films instead of making something different so like one thing i feel like a lot of people give marvel flack for which i think is true a lot of their movies feel the same like phase one like a lot of those movies feel the same right I mean, yeah. And uh, a, a lot of superhero movies in general feel the same. And look at what you're seeing now. These superhero movies that are different, very different, are doing well. Deadpool, that movie's not like any other superhero movie. It It is completely different from a lot of superhero movies. It did very well. And I feel like a lot of people who are coming out and creating these, uh, these unique ideas, Christopher Nolan, obviously, with interstellar inception tenant like these even though tenant's not a masterpiece like it's still such a cool film yeah it's better than half the shit that's coming out right now um or denis vel in the wave you know blade runner 2049 arrival like i feel like the last big masterpiece movie that came out was blade runner 2049 like there yeah. has like there there hasn't been another film like that where it's like you watch it and you're like i i'm watching movie history you know, the the thing that I'm I'm thinking here about now, like the more you talk about these movies and the more you talk about like especially like you mentioned um I forget what you said, but it reminded me of Christopher Nolan. I don't know if you said his name, but it reminded yeah, like yeah. there are good like there's good directors you got out here. There's good people who have these good like this imagination to make a great film and have done so. You said Tenet, that's what it was, I believe. Um and I I think another thing is like I don't remember the year. I'm not going to quote it exactly, but think about this this way. Film has been around how long? Uh, like 120 the 30s. years? Yeah, since the 30s. 30s? I thought it started in the early 1900s. They had like like film, but it was like really bad film. I mean, yeah, if you want to count those, yeah, sure. So I'm saying like it's been around for, I mean, X amount of time. And how long have they been making movies for the masses? Like they've stopped doing plays. Like it was like live action plays. They started making film. That's been even less. Like what? 50s 40s like so like the when it was like motion picture was 1888 jesus christ okay so when did they start doing them with sound since you're looking it up oh god uh after or was it, it after the 40s well they all had sound they had music but that's right silent films but like voice yeah um and then color came after right or was it color before uh it was uh voice first okay so they did voice and then they had color so think about that. They had these advancements where, oh, the, the 1880s, like, fuck, man, that's film. That's amazing. And then they started adding music at some point. Oh, my God, in film, it's so exciting. Now there's music to it. And then, oh, my God, they're talking. You can see their voices, even if it's, like, all mismatched. And they're, like, you know, going. And then the words come out, like that, that kind of stuff. And then they add color. And it's like, oh, there's, look, it's so much. There's so much they can do with it. And then because that was like as advanced, well, not as advanced, but it was, you know, getting better. Uh, about 1930s. Quality of the 1930s. Okay. 
but like they had the color the quality of the image was getting better so you yeah. hit later on 60s 70s 80s 90s of just prime amazing movie content and it's getting better and better the the image is getting clearer it's looking sounding better uh i mean actors actresses are amazing this time well now we're in the oh my god the 20s <laughs> holy shit 2020s that is i'm sorry that was weird to say out loud uh we're but we're we're here where we are now and i mean it's like the movies look as good as they can look they sound just about as good as they can sound and the actors and actresses the good ones from you know 50 years ago are now getting a little bit older so you're cycling them in with these people who you get these occasional great actors and actresses who are new to the game but for the most part you're relying on older folk who don't want to do as much don't want to be in those prominent roles so now it's at a point where, yeah, everything looks new and everything sounds new, but it isn't as good as it was because the hype of movies is kind of falling off. Like you said earlier, things like horror movies did really good uh, a long time ago because they didn't have the internet. The worst thing they saw were in these films. Well, I can sit here and Google up, Google up a fucking ISIS beheading video in like, you know, 30 seconds flat, and that'd be more traumatizing than any horror movie I've ever seen. So things are a lot different now. And the problem is, is filmmakers have not adapted, at least right. I don't think they have, enough to accommodate, like, actually thrilling, like, like just, what do they call it? Like, uh, a good grab, like, something that just yeah, takes you and attention. puts you in your, yeah, grabs your attention. Yeah. We haven't gotten that in most movies. Like, yeah, Marvel did a great job of pulling in a massive fan base because they did something that lasted for fucking years. That was, that was something that had not really been done before. Good for them. That was something new. That was a good place to start. But now you've got people who are in DC who are like, oh, our DC universe, animated universe is not working. What are we going to do? Well, you're fucking trying to do something that was already done. Like, yeah, DC is great and your characters could be great, but you're not doing it the way that Marvel did it. Now, frankly, I mean, it could be, it could be reversed, but that's not the point. The m amount of movies that are coming out are probably more than ever now. And the yeah. amount of movies that are good are the lowest they've ever been. And that is because yeah. we need something new. 3D came out at some point. I'm sure that there was a huge surge then, but it immediately yeah. fell off. I mean, we've got 4K. Who's making movies in 4K? People all the time. Who's making? No, but like, who's make? Is every single movie out coming out in 4K now? Almost. No, not not now. No, not every almost. single movie. I mean, we're getting to a point where they're almost all in 4K. But think, 10 years ago, they weren't all in 4K. Yeah, I mean, I think we're at a point where like 80 percent of movies are coming out in 4K. Yeah, that's my point. Is we're almost to a point where they're going to all be 4k and that's going to be the new every movie's 4k and then you know 8k whatever but the thing is is you're only getting the, the image so clear you're only getting the sound so crisp what's the next big thing that they can do in film other than literally have you there like yeah. make them live again like is it going to come full circle is it going to be like come see you know iron man 9 live in like in the th he's gonna be there and they're gonna have such amazing effects where you think that you're actually like until that what's the next big thing like I, I feel like movies are gonna majorly and if not in a almost dangerous amount of way like amount fall off to where even people like christopher nolan if they make a great film it's not gonna do as much as it could not like in the next few years but like in the next couple of decades well I unless something like, comes uh, out that changes it yeah i feel like a lot of it comes down to uh also how the studios view movies um and, yeah. and obviously it comes down to directors as well but i, I feel like back then you could kind of make whatever you wanted um i mean scorsese literally could make what he wanted i even before yeah. he had the reputation he could just you know he had this idea he went got the funding did it i feel like now exactly. a lot of people in a lot of companies they want uh something that can produce sequels something that can mm. become a franchise. And so you've seen a lot of movies try to do that and it it's failed. Um like one that actually like kind of succeeded was The Hunger Games. But as that series yeah. went on, it got worse and worse and people's got less and less interested. Um and with Marvel, like to their credit, they've done a pretty good job like keeping people interested until now. Like yeah. I feel like now is the the most important time marvel because your big story ended that was a good stopping point for a lot of people how are you going to bring yeah. them back right and so i feel like that's a lot of studios is uh 
idea. Let's make these movies that can create sequels and franchises. And so there's people like Denis Villeneuve or Christopher Nolan who say, no, here is one movie. Here's the full story. I'm not going to, you know, this isn't setting up anything. Here's a full story. And even though Christopher Nolan and Denis make fantastic movies, Blade Runner 2049 was a flop at the box office. Made like $250 million. And I'm sure a lot of people went and, let's see, it came out in 2016. What Marvel movie was 2016? Probably, it was probably one of the Ragnarok. Yeah, well, Civil War, actually, probably. I mean, so, I feel like, yeah, Civil Maybe War was, was. Yeah, Ragnarok was like 18. That's yeah, my bad. So, I feel like a lot of people, and I'm, I don't think they came out at the same time, but just let's say they did. Like, a lot of people would rather go watch that because they're comfortable with Civil War than go and watch this masterpiece film. So, Blade Runner did terrible, right? Um, which is sad because it's the greatest, I think it's the best movie of this decade. And yeah. a lot of these, like Christopher Nolan makes these fantastic movies, but they don't do as well as you would think. Like Tenet flopped, right? And I know it was in a pandemic and everything, but it flopped hard. Um, yeah. Like A Quiet Place Part 2 just came out uh, about a month ago. It has already made more money in the box office than Tenet did. Yeah. Which is crazy. And I, I know people can go back, but still, uh, or people can finally go back to the movie theaters. Um, so I feel like it, it does come down to these studios saying, let's not make sequels. If a movie needs a sequel, let's give it a good reason. A Quiet Place 2, yeah. which I just talked about. Um, well, shit, good, good examples like The Incredibles. How many years was there between The Incredibles and Incredibles 2? Right. That was when they wanted the sequel, but they made sure it was going to be worth it. The storytelling was going to be there. They didn't rush into it. They didn't make it, you know, a year later. Yeah. I mean, same thing with Finding Dory. I mean, what, 14 years later after Finding Nemo? Um, and yeah, so like for Quiet Place Part 2, uh, we'll talk about, you know, he didn't want to make a sequel, John Krasinski. And yeah. but he got a story that he felt like made sense. They did the same thing with Blade Runner uh, in general. Um, Ridley Scott never wanted to do a sequel, and when Denis got the helm, he wanted to make it... He didn't just want to make a sequel to Blade Runner. He wanted to make, like, a part, something that could go with the movie that made sense. It's not a cash grab. It is something that added to the world, added to the overall story. And Star Wars, I feel like, did that great, too, with the prequels. You know? Oh, there's this, for sure. There's this original trilogy that's perfect, basically. Let's yeah, add and then the it. sequels were the cash grab. Yeah. Let's add to it. And then Disney's like, oh, it's Star Wars. Just make the movies. And here we are, right? Star Wars is at yeah. a low point. Yeah. Star Wars, good. Disney say Star Wars can't mess up. Star Wars mess up. Yep. The movie's in a weird spot right now. And I do feel like at some point it's coming down to like something's got to change. I feel like these studios don't realize that they're causing more harm than good. Yeah, sequels well, are cool, but you're making bad sequels, and then people get disinterested in your franchise. Therefore, you're losing money overall. Well, the prob another problem, I think, is that there is a little bit too much politics and politically correctness in movies that the studios are kind of forcing because they're either going hardcore towards the direction of, like, add in every person of color and person of different sexualities and persons of different genders in as possible to open up, you know, acceptance from all these groups. And then there's the other end where they're doing the exact opposite of that because they don't want to force it in your face. And that's causing that other group to become angry, which causes the group that was not started for to love it more. You're, they're giving us that either right. something that is super cringy and like not good because you're taking a character, like say, Harrison Ford in his prime could have been a perfect character in a new movie coming out today. And he's, he's meant for this role. It's he will embody. It's like Indiana Jones, but 10 times better. But instead of doing that, they take in the person, this Harrison Ford who could have been amazing. And they put in someone who is a gay trans person of color into that spot. And this person is a shit actor. Doesn't do anything good. It, it's just, it's just to sh push the agenda and now that movie is terrible because they put someone who could not act worth a fuck into Free a spot Larson, meant for huh? someone else yeah uh, ex exactly um they do that because they want to be like oh look we accept everyone we're such good companies oh my gosh and now your movie sucks balls and you made money off of people who basically didn't well, have it in the first place i think the perfect example 
we'll go back to Star Wars, is the difference between Rey and Princess Leia, right? Mm-hmm. Princess Leia is a one of the greatest female characters, not because she's a woman, but because of the character and the story that she was given. She, and she played the character well. Yeah, she was a well. very strong woman in those movies. I mean, Star Wars is basically just about Princess Leia. Like, yeah. let's be honest. Like, the first movie is Princess Leia's movie. And, yeah. you know, she she's so iconic because of what her character story was. I feel like a lot of these movies, they just throw these, uh, like, gay characters in or women characters in. They just say, hey, they're strong, but they don't show that, right? Like Ray, what for instance, I, a lot of criticism of Ray was that she was a Mary Todd or Mary Sue, which means your character, a female character who is just good at everything without explanation. Princess Leia had an explanation. Ray, Brie Larson. Yeah, Ray can literally <laughs> picked up a lightsaber and outdueled Kylo Ren, who was a trained Sith, right? Which is bullshit. I mean, especially right. if you compare it to the prequels. Right. That actually pisses me off looking back at it. Yeah, tell me about it. Um, so. Like that's one one thing I feel like movies in general need to get better. I, movies have always been about expression and opinions. Go ahead, express yourself, but you need to give characters a reason and you need to prove their reason through action. And so that's why I feel like a lot of these movies that are going, I, I hate the term SJW because it's, it's so overused and it has such a negative connotation to it. But like these movies, like like Star Wars, you know, like The Last Jedi was like, very much in your face like this movie's about women empowerment these male characters who just sit there and they're all gung-ho like they're not right all the time and so they threw in your yep. face and you're like this this is weird because you're a guy sitting in the theater who paid for this and you feel like you're being bashed for two hours yeah and you feel like you're being like how it already happens in society when you go on social media where women are like men are literally fucking garbage and they need to fucking die because they're useless yeah which by the way Got into a huge rant. My mother and I talked about this. Uh, we were driving two hours in the car the other day. Talked about that whole scenario. I, I don't even want to get into it because I agree with you and it annoys me. But yeah. continue. And so, like with The Last Jedi, I mean, the whole thing was, oh, the male characters are wrong. And then it kind of ended up the male characters were right. And it was, it was a weird twist <laughs> because it was a weird twist because the women characters just came off so unlikable. Even Princess Leia came off so unlikable in that movie. Because and, they they wrote her character incorrectly in that. Right, and they didn't give the women characters good reasons and didn't give them good action. So some of the greatest characters of all time are women. Like, yeah. I don't have an issue with women or gay people or black people being in movies. I just don't want the movie to include them just to include Just them. to include them. Yes, include absolutely. Them for a reason. A gay character. Um, I can't even think of a, a movie with a gay character right now. But... There, there's a lot of ways you can implement. A, I mean, there's, there's, there could be a great movie that comes out talking about how, how hard it is for gay people back in the eighties, right? Like, you know, you, you could get beat up, whatever, while you're gay or for being gay, right? They can make a really good movie out of that. They just have to do it right, and they have to give good reasoning and action for the character. Um, it's really Deadpool hard. two. Who's gay in that one? Negasonic, Negasonic Teenage Warhead and his her girlfriend. Right, but you gotta remember, they kind of use it as a gimmick, first off. Give it to me, man. I was trying hard to think of a gay person. It was really hurting trying to think of him. I mean, like, look at George Michaels, right? The singer, right? He hid that he was gay for years. George really? Michaels? Yes, he's gay. Holy shit. <laughs> Damn. Yes. Drink to that, bro. Oh, okay. Anyways. You know, I want to build off of what you were saying earlier. Oh, yeah. go ahead. Sorry, you said anyways. So, anyways, I'll, these movies that are just throwing these political things in your face, cool. Give people reasoning and good actions for it. And real quick, I'll let you speak in just a second. Um, this also comes down to how I feel award shows have got, gotten. Um. So one of the things that pissed me off a lot uh, happened a few years ago. I don't watch the Oscars. I could care less what those people think. But I saw this. Natalie Portman was on stage, and she was giving out the uh, Best Director Award. Mm -hmm. And she sat there and went, here's your all-male Best Director Award. Okay, And that rubbed me the wrong way 
because not only for whoever won, now it's awkward for them, and you just ruined their fucking career moment, which it was Guillermo del Toro for uh, Shape of Water. He won. Made him feel awkward. But, you know, if... For, for award shows, let's just say, for movies, um, or music in general uh, as well, if the best directors are all women, like, if all these women made the best movies, okay, then all of them need to be nominated for best director. I don't need a man in there just to have a man in there. But it also goes the opposite way. If all the males made the best movies of those years and the best directed movies of those years, which typically happens because there's not that many female directors out there. I don't want a woman to just be thrown in like the Oscars are thinking about doing yeah. just because then it, it makes it less important. And I feel like it devalues the nomination. Like if you're that woman director that gets nominated, you weren't nominated because your movie was good. You got nominated because you're a woman. Yeah. It's, it's like same. diluting a hundred year old whiskey just to do it. Yeah. And it's the same thing for like, Oh, uh, there's not that many black actors who were nominated for uh best actor of the year. Okay. Maybe they just weren't the best this year. If they were all black, cool. If they were the best, sure. They gave the best performances. I don't care. They're essentially starting to hand out participation trophies just right. for being a black or be. being a woman. What it should be is you should be sitting there on in the chairs, and let's say Leonardo DiCaprio wins. You should sit there and go, I want to be like him. I'm going to work just as hard as him to become the best actor. And then you do it. And then you get nominated based off your achievements and what yep. you have put out there. But instead, we're giving. No, I don't think Leo was a good example because how many really, really great roles did he have before he won anything? A lot. That could show that you could work. That could show that you'd work your ass off to never win anything. But he deserves so many more. No, I know, I know. <laughs> he, I mean, was, was eating Gilbert Grape, Titanic, um, The Departed, Wolf of Wall Street. He should have won for. Um, he should have won. He should have won Best Supporting Actor for Django Unchained. Uh. I mean, the dude was just phenomenal. Uh, I mean, Inception. You will? Yeah, Inception. Like, he was phenomenal in that. Yeah, so I feel like that that's kind of my rant on, like, how those should be. Award people based off of what they put out there and what they uh, achieve, not their skin or race. That, that's my yeah. final, final point. Because, you know, it, I'm going to build off that real quick. It, the thing with, like, including a woman just to include, even if she didn't do a great job, like, you have to understand it isn't like at that point you're you're steering really really far from the like supporting women and that women can do great things you're you're starting to stare away steer clear of that and now you're in the realm of you're bad because you're a man like totally degrading boys and like men and their the, what they are can accomplish you're almost no you are essentially now in territory where you're saying publicly on TV, if you're a man, it doesn't matter. Like, you do a good job, but you're a man, you're now not as good because they're going to still bring in other people who are, like, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm trying to figure out how to word it, but, like, if you have all these, like you said, with the Natalie Portman thing, just men going in, they all did a really good job. They all deserve the nomination. One of them was going to win, but they're like, you know what? We need to bring a woman in here to be nominated, too. Like, you're just making it less important for people who did a great job. I know you already said it, but it's it just, like, it. you're not supporting women anymore. You're degrading men. Which... They're doing what, they're doing to men what they say men do to them. Yeah. And That's it's like, issue. if you want equality, you don't, you don't, like, it's, it's like, treat people the way you want to be treated. Not, like, how we were fucking raised. Like, you want somebody to be nice to you, be nice to them. Not, oh, they belittled me for forever i'm gonna belittle them that's not how you're not gonna make anything better doing that and there's a lot and i mean a fucking lot of people out there who think that's the way to go about it and it's not it's not the healthy thing to do like i know that there's gonna be people like well you need to check your white privilege you need to check your male privilege but it's like it's not like i'm just stating a fact and if if i'm as privileged as you say then why shouldn't i speak up and say something so the right thing is done in the long run but anyway, I probably, you know, a little bit too far off topic there. What I was going to say earlier, um, going back to Star Wars, uh, like The Last Jedi, was the storytelling. And that is for all movies, but a good example is going to be from comparing The Last Jedi to Empire Strikes Back. Storytelling. 
Now, I'm going to make a comparison here to D&D. So if I lose you, I'm sorry. But in uh, Empire Strikes Back, the main group splits up on Leia, Chewie, and then the droid, uh, 3PO. Good God. The droid. Go One Direction. Yeah, I couldn't remember his name. I was going to say R2, but I'm like, no, that's Bring the other one. The droid. Luke and R2 go the other way. So they they split the party. Now, in D&D, you split the party. It's a lot harder to tell the story for everyone because you've got one group doing one thing. you got one group doing another thing. And so only people who are really good at doing what they do can tell a good story in both ways because you got them split up. Um, in Empire Strikes Back, that's done amazingly. Luke goes to Dagobah. Fucking everyone else goes running away from the Empire. Eventually Cloud City, eventually Cloud City. You know how it ends. Everyone knows how it goes. But you split the party for a little bit, bring it back together. That's amazing. That's a great fucking way that they did that. Compare it to Last Jedi. What the fuck was that? I mean, take the masterpiece of the original trilogy to the sequel trilogy in that sense. You had the party, I guess it was split. I mean, like they kind of did the same thing where I don't even fucking remember. It was Finn and what's her Rose. dick? Rose. And then Ray, didn't she go do her own thing too? And then Poe stayed with Leia? Wasn't it something like there was, was, was split training. three? With Luke, right? Yeah, so that's a three-way split in this one. Like, Not that it's not saying it hasn't been done in other Star Wars iterations in, at any point, but they split it in this three-way thing. Like, you got fucking one thing, and it splits off, and you got, like, another little spot over there, and they just don't do a good job of telling the story because then you also have, which I guess you had it in Empire Strikes Back where you had, like, Darth Vader's perspective, but then you also have uh, Kylo and what General Crux, what was his yeah. name? Is that his name? Yeah. So you then have all these different things going on at the same time. And you have like, they felt it necessary to include Ben and Rose's casino world thing. Well, it's so, the it's so tied on political stuff too. Like, like I, it was, I, I think when you look at like that movie, it's what does those scenes add to it? And it's nothing. And that's my point. When you take it away, you're not taking away anything. So continue sorry. That, no that's my point you you're nailing it on the head in empire they split the party and for a reason like there's something to be going on there luke needed to go to dagobah to talk to master yoda because ben fucking kenobi was like yo bro gotta go see yoda he's gonna train you and then the other part of the group had to because they couldn't go with them they had to go do their own thing because they it's oh it's i'm jedi training it's by myself so then they're running from the Empire because they left Hoth, the, where the rebel base was. They go through all these hoops and fucking things to end up in Cloud City. You know, the mo majority of the group ends up there, and then Luke then has to go back to them because he has a vision, or Leia, I can't remember why. I, I just know that there's an important thing. I have to say my friends, all that shit. And so they, they meet up again, and then Six happens, or uh, Return of the Jedi. Well, they, they meet up in but with No. They meet up at the end of five because he goes to the back of the tank. Because he lost, he loses his hand. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Slice. And then, I mean, everyone meets up except for Han because he's frozen carbonate. They meet yeah. up together. I, that, that's fair, I guess, technically. But I'm saying, like, they, the rest of them meet up. But, um, yeah, I was just thinking because, like, they all go in to save Han and then lose yeah. up. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Thinking that's, about. I know. I, I get what you're think, thinking. I get you. But, um, but then you go back to fucking. Last Jedi. So you have the whole fucking casino casino world thing, which by the way, I, I literally don't know why they're there because they leave the ship to go do that and they're back on the ship for the end thing where they're on the salt planet. I can't remember the name. Great. Yeah. Yeah. God damn, I'm awesome. Uh so sorry. So you have all these things happening with the storytelling from what Star Wars was and is was meant to be perfect to then this new shit where it's like, go to the casino world and fuck the people with the money uh to oh we're on crate now no finn don't sack yourself don't sacrifice yourself for the greater good and then people fucking die because you're a dumb whore i mean bad person Dude, if he would have died first off they did my boy finn so bad in those trilogies. oh my god he had he such a, a great chance he should he should have yes um yep. and they just yep. they turned him into this like pawn political pawn yeah and he became such a wimp in those movies and i feel like 
with The Last Jedi, if he would have sacrificed himself right there, I feel like his character did his arc. Like, he did pretty well. He had, he had a pretty decent arc. But no, Rose saves him and kisses him. And then it's like, wait, that doesn't work because Finn's always had, like, this thing with Rey. And then now Rose is here. It was well, just... doesn't he end up being fucking gay or something? Doesn't he want to fuck Poe in the last one or some well, shit? Well, they always talked about, like, uh, I forget his name. But the person who played Poe um, wants wanted Oscar Isaac. yeah wanted poe and finn to be together yeah and it's like cool, you know what make a cool story could have happened cool no, i would have they could have done yeah. it like poe saving him and everything the whole escape thing if yeah. they would have been boning each other in that fucking x-wing with bba going <laughs> by all means would have been better than what happened with him and rose and also i'm thinking about it i cannot fucking remember what finn does of importance in the last film other than like stand on the outside of a ship and go Go, Rose. We'll take care of it. Go. And then it's like fucking lightning. That's like, like all he I can was remember. The, he was being annoying in the movie. That's what he, his role was. Yeah. It is. And then also the way they like made Poe the best fucking pilot in the resistance in the first movie to be like, I'm sorry, guys. I thought I could be your general and I can't. I'm just so worthless. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, that trilogy hurts me. I, I, I'm <sighs> Like, Rise of Skywalker, say it for what you want, it's not great, but at least it's not The Last Jedi. At least they tried fixing it, but man, like, that sequel trilogy, they just, they need to decanonize it and try again. It's amazing to me that something like, uh, what was the fucking seventh movie called again? Force Awakens. Uh, Force Awakens. Something like Force Awakens that, like, actually made me happy to watch. Like, yeah, it was Force a Awakens good ass good. movie. Pretty yeah. Good. Something like that turned into something so bad. Oh, real fast. Like, yeah. Like they killed they killed Han and for what? And Luke. And for what? Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Killed him. Literally. And like, you know what's fucking hilarious about that? The only only character left alive was Leia. Ironically, the only actress who ended up fucking dying. I should have killed Chewie. I'm mad. No, I like Chewie. But man, when Chewie, uh, when they yeah, faked his death, dude, oh my god! I was, I was, I was in the theater. I was like, "There's no fucking way they're about to fucking kill Chewie." That would be the end of Star Wars, dude. If they, well, first of all, yeah, if they did that, but if they had Ray kill him, that movie meant nothing. That movie would have been literally nothing to me I if they like had what they went for. Ray. Like, her having to freak out and like she killed Chewie, like. Yeah, I know, but it's just a fucking, it was the easy way out. I know, I know. I hate that I'm starting to see things in your, in your eyes because you've always, you're always such a critic and I always go like, come on, man, like chill out a little bit. And I look back at things. I'm like, fucking hate that. I fucking hate it. Like, it's not even a, I dislike it's a, it's a passionate burning hatred for Kathleen Kennedy. The way, the way I am with movies, like it's, it's a blessing and a curse because like, okay, so, like, I am very critical about movies. Like, there's a lot of movies I think people think are good that I think is bad. Um, Back. Well, but, we had the whole Interstellar thing, so. Oh, God. But, see, those idiots, I laid out why it was so good. They just weren't listening. Um, yeah, I'm not going to get into it because I just, I horribly yeah. disagreed with them. And, like, so let's take Captain Marvel, right? Because uh, that's one I, I feel pretty strongly about, like. A lot of people were saying, oh, this is like a top tier Marvel movie. And I'm watching this shit going, what the fuck is this? Like, this is bottom tier, second worst movie in this fucking franchise. And if Samuel L. Jackson wasn't in that movie, oh it might God. as well not have been a Marvel movie. Yeah, Samuel L. Jackson makes everything a little bit better. Um, yeah, so the, the blessing and curse. The curse is a lot of mediocre movies are just bad for me. So I don't get a lot of enjoyment out of a lot of other movies that people do. But... The blessing is, is that when I see a fantastic movie, I get way more enjoyment out of it because I'm sitting there and I'm looking for critiques and looking for these things to like, you know, bring the movie down and I can't, right? Like, uh, I, like we talk about Interstellar, like I, people don't care for that movie. I don't get it. Like the score, the film, the, the direction, the, the writing, like it, it's solid. It's great. It's not a masterpiece. The score alone makes that movie like an eight out of 10. 
yeah i mean it's not a masterpiece don't get me wrong but like that that is a that's a, that is as close to a masterpiece like you can get without the movie being trash like it's it's hard to explain like blade runner like 2049 and i always always talk about it like but that's one of the, when i watched that for the first time the amount the enjoyment i got out of that was way better because of the way i am um and so yeah, I mean, there's there's some movies I like that are garbage that I like. Like I'm sure some people sit there and go, "Oh, the mummies are bad." Like I I know they're bad. I know the second one's not that great. Well, the first one's actually a fucking masterpiece. It's an adventure master, adventure masterpiece. The second one, I know it's not the best thing in the world. I fucking love the movie yeah. though. Scream three, people say it's the worst one in the franchise. That's my second favorite one. Yeah. Um, but it's just it, it's just one of those weird things. I just. I don't know. Movies are just weird right now. And we're getting way more worse ones than we are good ones. And it's so sad because I'm having to come home and sit here and go, man, I just spent $20 on that and wasted two and a half hours of my time seeing that in the movie. And that's not what I should be thinking about. Like when I saw a quiet place too, like that was a good experience. Went there. It it was my first movie back in the movie theaters and God, nine months. And I sat there, I watched a fantastic movie. It's not a masterpiece. It's, you know, it's, it's like a 7.5, 8 out of 10 for like a, a, like a monster movie. I, I had mm-hmm. a fun time. I got to come home, look at my mom because she went with me. And I was like, that was fun. That was great. And then, you know, you go see Captain Marvel in the theater. I'm sitting there like, what, what am I watching? Like, why am I here? I don't belong here. Yeah. I should have given up my seat to a woman. Maybe she would have enjoyed it more than me. Nice. But yeah, it's just weird. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Alrighty. That's all well, I got. Uh, that's, that's all I got this week. Yeah. That's a little rant. Right. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if you're on YouTube, SoundCloud, uh, if you're on Apple, please leave us a review. Um, iHeartRadio's follow, I believe as well. Um, and we will see you guys next week. I don't think anything's happening. We're I don't actually, think so. we're actually really close to, uh, our rankings should be not next week, but the week after. No. Yes. We've got no, we've got a few movies left. We didn't watch one last week. Yeah, but we got we have we have Thor Ragnarok, Ant Man the Wasp, Infinity War Endgame. Yeah, that's not gonna be next week. No, I didn't say next week, the week after. Oh, well, if we're lucky, yeah. Because we should watch Infinity War and Endgame together. Well, yeah, absolutely. Those, yeah, that's fair. We should, yeah. And then we'll watch, we'll watch Far From Home before we do the podcast at some point. We'll figure it out. Oh yeah, Far From Home. Yeah, mm. uh, yeah. Forgot about that. Yep. All right, guys. We'll see you next week.